Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on planning and carrying out investigations, level two, fair tests. So when you're doing an investigation, an investigation isn't done just to do an investigation. It's always done to understand or better understand a phenomena. And as you do that in your investigation, you'll start to gather data, and then that data is going to help you better understand the phenomena. So you always want to identify what is the phenomena that I'm really investigating and then how can that investigation help me better understand the phenomena itself? A good fair test or a good investigation will always have a purpose, evidence that you're gonna gather, and then there's gonna be a prediction that you'll make at the beginning. So good investigation starts with why am I doing the investigation, which will go right back to the phenomena, what you're trying to figure out. And so after you've figured out your purpose, evidence, and prediction, then you're gonna come up with a plan, an investigation plan. And so that plan is going to be a detailed step-by-step, -step, how do I do the investigation? You'll also figure out what kind of data am I going to gather? And then as you do that, you're going to think about what are the things in my investigation that I want to keep constant and what are the things that I'm going to vary? So there's a lot of components to a good investigation. After watching this video, you should be able to plan your own investigation using something like a light sensor in your phone or even using one of these simulations on, on how to do some plant growth. I'm gonna start by showing you a simple investigation using a Newton's cradle, and then you'll have a chance to do something similar using this sled pole. And so I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna get started with investigations. Okay, as we start to think about investigating, you always want to start with some phenomena. And I always think a real easy way to get started with is a Newton's cradle. I'm sure everybody's seen these on a desk before. And so we're just going to start with the Newton's cradle as a phenomena. And then once you've identified a phenomena, then you just want to uh, play around with it. And you want to start thinking about what are some things or what are some questions that I could start to answer? One thing that I've always been interested in is just how long does it go and what might contribute to how long it goes? And so let's say I'm going to try and just focus on this one purpose. So let me write down a purpose. Okay, so what I'm interested in is how does the number of spheres release? So one sphere released versus two spheres released. How does that affect the time of collisions? In other words, how long it's going to keep going? And so if I really want to answer that question, the first thing I have to think about is what evidence am I going to gather? Okay, so the evidence that I would be important in my, in my gathering would be the number of spheres that I'm releasing each time and also the total time until the collisions stop. And once I've done that, before I actually do the investigation, I wanna make some kind of a prediction. So let me make a prediction. Okay, so what I'm thinking is the more spheres released, so if I, list, if I release one sphere, I think it will go longer or shorter than two spheres or three spheres. That's kind of my prediction. That's what I'm thinking. So now the next thing I want to start thinking about is I want to think about like what, what is my plan going to do? How am I going to, what are the steps that you would follow through to do this investigation? And as they do that, I really want to think about what are some things that I keep constant? So the variables that I'm going to change. So you can see that right here. The variable I'm going to change is the number of spheres that I'm releasing. And then what's another variable is going to be how long those will last. I really want to think about before I do the whole plan, I want to think about what are the things that I want to keep constant in this investigation. So let me list some examples of that. So what are some things that I want to keep constant? Well, it wouldn't really be fair if I release this one from this distance, kind of at the edge of the Newton's cradle stand. And then if I were to release the second one way up here, that doesn't seem fair. It seems like it's way higher. And so I'm gonna to try to release it each time so that the spheres, if I get my finger out of the way, 
Sphere one is always lined up kind of at the same point. So that's one thing that I want to keep constant. Also, I want to make sure that I have a clean release or a drop. And then I also want to make sure that the non-launch spheres shouldn't be moving. So those are the things that I'm going to keep the same or I'm going to keep constants in my experiment. Next thing I want to think about is what's going to be my plan. So let me write out the steps of my plan. Okay, so my plan is to pull back sphere one to the edge of the platform and drop release. That's kind of coming from my constants. Time the collision from the release to the end of collision noises. Repeat for two and three spheres released for three trials and then calculate the average. And so the first time you do an investigation, you never know if it's going to work out, but it's always good to have a good plan and the constants are going to help you on that. What's the last thing I do before I start doing the investigation? I need some kind of a data table. And in that data table, I want to have my variables. What am I changing? And then what am I going to be measuring? So let me write those down. Okay, so here's my data table now. So in my data table, I'm going to be changing the number of spheres. And then I'm going to do three trials with sphere one, one sphere released, two spheres released, three spheres released. And so all of the things in my data table are going to be my variables. It's what am I changing and then what's going to vary as a result of what I'm changing. And then my constants are going to be the things that I keep the same. And so now I've done a pretty good investigation. I feel like this is a fair test. Uh, I've got a plan. And so the last thing that I have to do is I have to gather some data. So this might take me a second. Okay, so now I've got some results and what I found is if we look at with releasing one ball, I found that the average was 15.7 seconds um, with two balls 11.5 and three 8.4. And so my prediction was wrong and that happens all the time in science. I thought it would go farther if, it, if I was releasing more of them or it would last longer and it doesn't. So it makes me better understand the Newton's cradle. Maybe some of that energy is lost to um, sound, maybe it's something like that. So by doing an investigation, I better understand the phenomena. So we've gone through a lot of steps, but the key thing is not so much in the data that you gathered, but it's in the planning of the investigation. Um, one thing that you can look when you look at the different trials, um, averages are not that important, but you can see that all of these for ball one are really close, but for ball two, they're really varied. And if you ever see your trials way different, that means you're doing something wrong and you may want to revisit that. I think I was having a hard time with two and three balls releasing it or spheres releasing it kind of in the same way. And so that's just what you don't know until you do the investigation. But again, the biggest thing is finding a purpose, make predictions and a plan. Um, now I'm going to clean this all up and I'll give you a chance with a different uh, phenomena. Okay, for the next one, I've been playing around with this scale and then I made just a <laughs> little sled and you can put things in it. If there's nothing in it, you can see that it's really not that hard to pull. But if you put a lot of things in it, so this is 100, 200, 300, 400 pennies. If you put it in the sled when I pull it, then you can see. I can feel it's harder, but you can also see that on the scale on here. And so what I'd love to have you do is pause the video and do what I just did. Go through, identify a phenomena, 
purpose, evidence, prediction, come up with a plan, thinking about the constants, and even set up a data table. And then when you're done, unpause the video, come back, and then we can see how our investigations are going to be similar and how they might be different. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to figure out what is going to be the phenomena. Okay, so I'm going to investigate the sled pull. I know that if you pull it and there's more weight in it, it's harder, but I don't know how much. I want to quantify that a little bit. So let me write down a purpose. So the purpose is going to answer the question, how does the weight in a sled affect the pull force? Now I have to figure out what's the evidence that I'm going to collect and what might be a prediction. Okay, so now I've got a prediction. I'm thinking if you increase the weight in pennies from 100 to 200 to 300, that you're going to have to pull with a greater force, at least measured with grams on this little scale. So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out a plan. But remember, as you're figuring out a plan, you want to make sure, well, I'm changing these two things. What are the things that I have to keep the same so that it's a fair test? So let me list some of those things that must be constant in the experiment. So three things that I want to keep the same are the surface, obviously, I'm pulling it on, the sled, the pulling angle, and then the speed. I notice right when I pull it, it's got one sort of pull force, but then as I get going, it's going to be a different one. So I want to make sure I'm always pulling it the same and, and measuring it at the same time. So those are going to be the constants. Once I have the constants, then I can write a pretty good plan. Okay, so I've got a plan. I'm going to add 100 grams to the sled, observe the force, then record this for three trials, repeating with 200 and 300, and then calculating the averages. I'm almost ready to go. What do I need? I need a data table. So let me put a data table together. Okay, now I've got a data table. These are the things that I'm changing. These are going to be my trials and then this is going to be the average when I'm all done. So last thing I have to do is just do the investigation. So let me do it. Okay, so now I've done the investigation. You can see as I increase the weight in the sled, I also increase the pull force. And that's kind of what I had predicted. You can see that my results are not exactly the same, but they're kind of close. Uh, one thing that I would improve is it's really hard to measure the grams in here. So I don't know what a better way I could improve my design to do that. So that's how you plan investigations. Now that you've learned how to plan investigations with lots of examples, you could try it with different phenomena. I've got some down below. First one would be uh, looking at how light is affected by the distance. And then another one of just looking at plants and how different color light might affect plant growth. Um, but that's how you plan an investigation. The constants are really important to making sure that this is a fair test. And I hope that was helpful.